Hey, good morning. Edna Keep here live today, uh, Free Coaching Friday, all about negotiations. So uh, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to get on here. I know we, uh, we try to start right at 10, so uh, I, I always get reminded by my team, wait a couple minutes for people to get on, chit chat a little bit. Oh, there we got some people joining us. Hi, Harry, how are you? Got a good weekend planned? Looks like it's going to be a beautiful weekend again. Uh, we actually head out on a holiday tomorrow, so uh, we're just going to get in the vehicle and drive. Uh, going to be taking our, our two daughters and also my granddaughter, so that'll be kind of fun. And uh, so we're, we're really, really looking forward to it. And of course, I got a very, very book day today because that's what happens the last day before you head out on a holiday, right? <laughs> Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Amanda. Hey, how's the Soyuz? I seen some pictures yesterday uh, with no, no snow or very little snow. Now, I, I should be showing pictures too. I don't know if you can see, but outside my window, oh no, you can't. We have very little snow left too. It actually was, oh, I knocked that down. It actually was um, plus nine degrees yesterday. And so we have a very little snow left. It was very, very slushy all day, uh, but it felt like spring. It was absolutely gorgeous. And it looks like it's gonna be the same type of day today. So we're looking at, uh, we're quite excited about getting in the truck. Uh, and are I, am I getting a new truck? You know what? It's on my list. And if everything goes well with all the stuff that we're working on right now, I will have my new truck by the end of the year. So uh, wish me well on that. We got a lot of things in the works right now. We just have to pull them all together. So we're really excited about that. Um, okay, well, you know what? I give people a few minutes. I got some uh, great people joined here. So this is awesome. Hi, Linda. Who else do I got on here? Daniel. Uh, another Daniel. Audrey. Good morning. Oh, I'm getting lots of hearts. This is awesome. <laughs> we like to see that. Um, one of the one of the things that again I like to start this off with a quote by Howard Baker. This time it says, "The most difficult thing in any negotiation." is making sure that you strip it of the emotion and deal only with facts. So uh, that, that's a good point to start with. I know sometimes we get emotionally involved with the deal. Uh, I know we have, you know, we just think we got to get this deal done. We spent so much time on it. And uh, now that we look back, uh, some of those could have been let go very easily, but that's okay. It does happen. Um, so today the topic is the three C's of negotiation and the three C's are collect, uh, clutter and close. So collecting is all about questioning. So when you're um, working on a deal, the more information you can get, the better off you'll be. So you just want to make sure that you ask every question that could possibly come up. Um, and even ask, uh, you know, personal questions. I know you don't always get a chance to if you're dealing with a realtor, uh, but ask the realtor and ask your realtor to find out. You know, things like, uh, well, what are you going to do? Like, why do you want to get out of this deal? Uh, what what makes you, uh, what, do you, what do you like best about it as it is? Uh, if you were to start over again, how would you do it differently? And, you know, they're, they're not always going to answer you honestly, but if you build a good rapport with them, uh, you, you might find out a lot of really good stuff. They might find out that uh, they're not meant to be landlords. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's just uh, their issue, not necessarily that you're going to have the same challenge. Um, so, again, ask as many questions as you can and, and ask to always for a vendor take back because, if, uh, you know, when, when you're questioning it, that's one of the times where you bring that up. If, if they're just going to take and stick the money in the bank, they don't really have any other plans, great way to get a vendor take back. It's also a great uh, selling feature. And people realize that too, that if they offer or they take up part of a vendor take back, there's a much higher chance of everything closing because then people like us, there's less money that we have to raise, right? Okay, so remember this, the one asking questions is the one in control. Uh, be sure to ask the right ones. Get all the information that you need to know. Find their hot buttons. What's their motivation? Like I said, what's their motivation to sell their property? 
um, it, and that motivation could tie in with yours. Uh, sometimes, I, and I've seen this happen, people just become joint venture partners because it's not that they uh, want to entirely get out of the deal, but maybe they just don't want to be the manager. You know, there's different stuff like that that could happen. Uh, ask the same question with at multiple angles to reveal any lies or half-truths that they might cover. Now, I don't know if you ever watch any uh, any law and legal shows. We do, that it, it tends to be what interests us. And you know, they do that all the time. They'll ask, um, uh, where were you last night? And then they'll ask, where were you between five and seven? You know, they'll ask the same question many different times trying to trip you up. Uh, so remember that better questions make for better answers. So so just watch for that. The more good questions you can ask. And of course, the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. So uh, keep that in mind too. And you know what? That's the same thing even negotiating with your own family. Find out what they're really, really looking for. You know, uh, your daughter might be asking to stay out till midnight uh, on a Friday night or a Thursday night and you're you're wondering well why why a Thursday night do you want to stay stay out till midnight don't just automatically say no listen to them and listen what they have to say maybe uh, they gotta be in cheer camp or dance camp all weekend so they're not going to get a chance to see their friends and they have a very light day on Friday you know and 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 respect that you know you don't have to be the big bad guy uh, with your kids all the time uh, let them know that you're on their side so you know it's another thing too you might uh, be negotiating about where you want to go out for supper and your husband might say well I want to go to such and such a pizza place and uh, he because he wants pizza and and actually in our house it's usually the worst because or the opposite because I love my pizza and I and so the answer might be well you know how about we go to this place because they have really good steak and really good pizza so all those are negotiating tactics find out what they're looking for because it might not be the place so much that they want to go to but a certain type of food make sense Good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Logan. It's great to have you guys on. Uh, okay, so what else do we got? Um, the more time you spend collecting, the higher your chances are of victory. Do not make an offer until all of the necessary data and positions are on the table. You absolutely need to do that. And challenge everything to find the real value. Sometimes what's really valuable to you is not necessarily what's re a really, really valuable to the seller. So keep that in mind too. Uh, they might say, I want $200 and I want you to pick it up today. And and you w or want to really find out, well, does it really have to be today? Uh, I've, if I e-transfer you $200 right now, can I pick it up tomorrow? You know, like th those are negotiation things, right? Uh, find out what they really, really want. Uh, also find out, discover the real value. You know, uh, well, what, what did you pay for that sofa? What did you pay for the building? Uh, what, what, why do you figure it's valued at 200,000 more than you paid for it a year ago? You know, ask, ask those questions, I'll tell you. Um, the, the second one is clutter. Now, clutter just means adding a whole bunch of stuff that may not even be really, really valuable to you because it just gives you more, uh, more things to knock off that don't matter to you to get to the, to the real bones that do matter to you. So, uh, it might be things like, um, uh, I want possession date on, uh, June 2nd and I want, uh, uh, three I want three months guaranteed rent I want vendor take back of 15% I want uh, a vendor take back at 4% you know all these things are negotiable so the more things that you add in uh, they, they can check them off as oh I'm, I'm giving if giving up that so when 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 um, you give up a concession. So say you say, okay, well, it doesn't have to be June 2nd, it can be May 28th, and then we're collecting rent. But you do realize that that, again, uh, that's more work for me. You got the most of the rent for the month, uh, so I want the price to be such and such. Or I want another term added on, you know, that sort of thing. 
um, most people are afraid to clutter. They think uh, they want to make the most simple and straightforward offer. Well, sometimes that can work in your favor and sometimes it doesn't. So don't be scared to clutter. Uh, create extra clutter by raising issues. Well, you know, if I close on uh, May 28th, that only gives me two days to give notices into the tenants. Uh, that means that uh, quite likely I won't be able to collect all the rent checks on the first. That puts me behind. I'd really rather you collect rent this time and uh, we'll make possession date the third and all the rents you collect will, will just be negotiated uh, that or, or uh cared for in the adjustments at the lawyers. You know, that could be something. Um, items will be traded, challenged, and phased out. The person with the most items usually wins. Wants and needs are two different things. So know what you want and what you need and know what they want and what they need. That's very, very important. And there's always a big difference between, well, not always. There's, there's usually a difference between what they want and what they really, really need. If you find out somebody really, really wants to get out of a deal for whatever reason, what do they really, really need? Is it a time factor? Is it a money factor? Is it a just getting the loan paid off factor? There's so many different things to think of. And again, ask for everything and then charge for concessions. So anything that you give up, ask for something in return. So if you decide to go with the May 28th uh, possession date as opposed to the June 2nd, then uh, maybe get a certain amount uh, knocked off the price or whatever you think is reasonable. Um, so make make trades for what you really want. Like if it's something that you don't really want and they're, they're sounding like they really want it, give it to them. That's, that's just a low value trade. Uh, give away low value items to you and take away the high value items that you want. Um, if you don't have time to get all those uh, letters in and you don't have a team to look after that so you know that they cannot in fact start collecting rent in the right name by the first, then uh, you know maybe, maybe you just have to uh, stick to your guns there and say absolutely can't collect uh, rents on my own. I need I need to have that month to be able to put my team into uh, into order to get the rents collected for the beginning of the next month. Get the checks made out to the right uh, right place. Um, positions will change throughout the negotiation negotiation process. So something that the the seller that says is really really important at the beginning. As you start knocking it down and pointing out things, they may realize that it's not uh, a really big deal uh, to them after all, especially if they have to give up something that they really, really want. So that's why I'm saying it could change in the middle uh, or even close to the end. Um, this is another good quote that I really, really like, and it works really well, really well. Count to 10. This is a classic negotiation technique. It's gentle, soft indication of your disapproval and a great way to keep negotiating. Count to 10, by then the other person will usually start talking and may very well make a better offer. Make sense? Now, what causes failure in a negotiation? Well, what causes failure is you skip the preparation altogether and you go in and you wing it. Uh, some of us are predisposed to doing things that way. Uh, some of us have a, a personality that, that works a lot better. Like I know I, I think very well on my feet. Uh, my husband does not. So he, he always thinks after of the things that he could have and should have and, and, and would have said, whereas I, I, actually think uh, better in the middle of a negotiation. So uh, not as important for me to have every T crossed and every I dotted going in as say it would be for my husband because he wants to know exactly what he wants to get. Uh, no, don't count to 10 out loud, no. Uh, that would, uh, just do it very quietly in your, like just in your mind because yes, I do agree, man. <laughs> if you start going one, Two, that reminds me of uh, how we used to talk to our kids when we do the one, two, three magic uh, <laughs> parenting uh, skill. I don't know if you guys remember that, but we'd say, do, do this now. And then we'd try to argue with you and you'd go, 
one, two, and then they run off to the room. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> That's a very good point, Amanda. Oh, why is my dog barking again? I must be hearing some neighbors out there. Sorry about that. I know her, her bark's very, very sharp sometimes, so I know it can get annoying. Hey, good morning, Minaj. How are you? Uh, what if you stutter? <laughs> Well, if you stutter, uh, just, just take your time and, and practice. You know what? There's a lot of people out there that study, stutter and they still get deals done. So uh, it, it sometimes it maybe helps you have some time to think while you're starting out to say something. Um, another thing that causes uh, failure is rushing the collection period. You know, you might think you only need three questions answered, but the more questions you can ask, and like I said, in different ways, uh, you'll flush you'll flush certain things out. So it'll be it it remember to do that. Uh, another thing is forgetting to clutter your offer. Uh, if if you're giving up ten concessions, well, maybe you're getting ten back. Just remember that. And they might, or maybe you're only getting five back, but there are five really good ones if you're giving up ten small ones. So uh, clutter that offer. Um, and another one is building zero value. Uh, you know, like if you say, I want a vendor take back, but you don't explain to them why it would be beneficial, uh, then there's no real value in there. And if they don't understand it or can't see the value of leaving their money in their building as opposed to putting it in, uh, in an interest-bearing bank account, uh, then, then you've left something on the table because if you can get a chance to explain to them two things. One is, if we leave it going for a while, you won't get all your tax implications in one year. And a second thing might be, uh, and 6% interest is better than, uh, than the one or two you're going to get in a bank. Uh, so there's many different ways of explaining that to people. So create some value when you're dealing with people. Um, and, and, and it could be even right down to, uh, well, you know, I'm living in, in this house now and it's really difficult for me to get out by the end of the month. Can, can you work with me on that? And, you know, if it's not a big deal to you, say, yeah, you know, absolutely. And maybe, maybe they uh, pay rent or, or whatever your concession happens to be. Or maybe they knock a little bit off the price or maybe they take care of your legal fees. There's so many different ways to negotiate that. But again, that's value. Uh, if you can work with them, uh, that's a win-win situation. If you only win and no one else wins, that doesn't mean you're a good negotiator. Uh, a good negotiator uh, makes the other pe person feel like they've got just as much out of the deal as as you did. Um, so remember that. And then keep in mind too, that some of these people you might be dealing with again. And if you grind them right into the ground to every last penny, well, chances are you'll never even get a chance on the next deal. So keep that in mind too. Um, Rob says, how late into negotiations can you clutter? In our current deal, we're to close by February 28th, but after a tour of the property, we and our investors wanted to adjust the price because the property um, needs 20 grand of improvements to attract good tenants. Uh, you know what, that's a really good question, Rob, and the, the thing is you can negotiate right up until the day that you remove conditions. And and very important to know is you wouldn't have known that ahead of time because uh, usually in a commercial deal uh, or multifamily residential, you don't get in to see the property ahead of time. So there's always gonna be negotiations right up till the very last day. So yeah, and you can write it out uh, if you're not dealing with the, with the vendor personally or you can just talk to them and say, you know, uh, this is something that we've noticed. The property needs about $20,000 of improvements to in order for us to attract good tenants. Uh, you can either paint it yourself, maybe you can get a good deal before our possession date, or uh, maybe we'll just knock 20 grand off the price. And, and again, that's another negotiation tactic, and or. You could do this or this. And then the only thing is, is if you negotiate that they're gonna do it, make sure you get back into the building and make sure that that paint job is uh, up to snuff for you uh, or that it's even done because sometimes they'll agree to the concession, but it doesn't actually get done. Uh, so, th so that makes really good sense. 
Um, another one is trading poorly. Uh, maybe you give up a big concession but only get a small one. Uh, you, if you're going to give up a big concession, maybe go for three or four small ones that would add up to the difference. Um, another would be another um, failure would be trying to close too early. Uh, longer negotiations, the higher the chance of closing. So take your time. Uh, sometimes, you know, one of our very first no money down deals that we got, uh, we we must went back to the property. I don't know four or five times talking to her and getting more information and and asking you know what she needed what she wanted because it, it was my husband again and he he doesn't always think think through everything so he would go and he would negotiate then he would come back and he'd tell me what he'd said and what he did and I'd, maybe, I'd give him another suggestion he'd think oh that's good or oh no that won't work or oh no I did actually ask that and then he'd go back again so sometimes you you know going in and out two or three different times uh, again is, is another way to get it done um, and the other is trying to complete the steps out of order. Um, you, you really want to prepare first. Uh, you want to then uh, spend the time doing your uh, questioning or your collecting information. Uh, then, uh, then usually we try to put in some clutter. But like I said, we don't always know uh, what, what challenges we're dealing with before we have the property under contract. Um, and you know, if you forget your, your value, well, you can go back to it later, but it's always nice to build that value up front. Like maybe if you know, they've got two or three other buildings that they're going to want to sell within the next year, you talk about the group of people that you work with that are always looking to be buying, uh, good deals. So if, if they think, oh, well, this person might line me up with my next buyer too, then you know what, that's, that's another thing that you can put in ahead of time that's creating value for them because now instead of them running out and feeling like they have to put their next building with a with a realtor then maybe uh, uh, they they can sell it without a realtor involved and save you both some uh, fees or costs so again uh, uh, keep keep things in order and and uh, don't don't try to close on your on your first visit uh, you can always do that later on too um, some final thoughts is negotiations about knowing exactly what you need and want, uh, going after it and respecting the other person in the process. I know my absolute uh, worst person to, to deal with is somebody who shows lack of respect right off the go. Like if they make some comment about uh, we don't know what we're doing or and, and I actually had that with a vehicle one time. I had bought this car. Uh, it had been in an accident, but uh, it was a body shop uh, owner that uh, was selling the vehicle. So they'd done the work themselves. She, they showed me the work they did. We had an inspection done ahead of time to know it was good. Uh, I had that vehicle for oh, a couple years. I loved it. And when it came time to sell, uh, I knew I had, uh, I had, had a good car. And so I actually was selling it for the same price I bought it. And so, of course, uh, one of the questions asked of me was how much I paid for it. And I told him, I said, I got a really good deal uh, uh, because the car had been in an accident and they were worried and it scared them. But you know what? I've owned this car for two years. I haven't had a speck of problem with the, with the challenge that came with the accident. Uh, and I know it's still worth, uh, I, I, I know it's still worth that. And if you don't take it, somebody else will. And one guy tried to um, talk to me about my floor being dirty, that there was, you know, some rocks on the floor. Well, I had just vacuumed that car, and so I knew it was probably cleaner than it had been the whole time I owned it. And I said, "That's that doesn't work with me. You're not going to get... Uh, money off because there's a few rocks on the floor like the minute you get in that car if we're standing on a gravel road there's gonna be a few rocks in the car so forget it. if you can't afford it just go away you're, you're not getting it the next guy that came up uh, I told him what I wanted for the vehicle uh, they asked a few questions they said yep we're willing to give that to you uh, we do want um, to, do we do want to get it inspected ourselves first I said absolutely I don't have any problem with that they took it, got it inspected, came back with a check, and I got my ten thousand five hundred. And we also did that uh, with with one of our houses that we were living in that we sold. Um, 
we've been dealing, uh, we were just getting ready to put it on the market with a realtor. And uh, one of my daughter's friends who'd been in our house said, oh, I hear you're, I hear you're selling your house. And we said, yeah, we are. It actually, we're, we're, we've been dealing with a uh, realtor and it goes on the market tomorrow. And he says, well, he says, I've always loved that house. He says, could I, could I come over and have a look at it? And I said, absolutely. And so he came over and he said, uh, um, okay, I, I need to think about this a few minutes. And I said, well, or I need to think about this. And I said, we can't think too long because the realtor's coming over at 10 in the morning. And if we want to be able to save that fee, uh, you have to buy it today. Uh, and he said, okay, I just need some time. And he went out. Uh, I don't know if he went to talk to somebody or whatever and he came back and I think my price was um, 115 or 118 I can't remember exactly and he came back and he said uh, I want to I want to give you this and it was only a small amount difference like 3,000 and and just the way he said it I knew that he wasn't uh, he, he wasn't secure on or not secure he wasn't adamant on that price because the way he said it was kind of well, you know, I'd really like to get up for 115. And I said, you know what? I know, I know I can get 118 for it. So, or whatever the price was. So, no, if you want it, this is my price. And he took it. So, you know what? Again, uh, it, and, and you know what? I, I wasn't giving any false um, uh, uh, pressure about dealing with the realtor. It was absolutely true. We'd already talked to the realtor uh, we were going to list it, I don't know if it's the next day or the day after, and whatever it was, that was what I told him. And you know, he'd probably already heard all that from my daughter. So everything uh, that he'd already heard, I reinstated, and yeah, we ended up getting our full price. Now, with that said, we wish we would have kept that house because uh, with what happened in the markets, we sold that in 2002, and with the markets, that uh, particular um, house range of value went up a lot uh, percentage wise even higher than our house in Lake Ridge so if we would have kept it we would have been even better off but ah that's hindsight right um, do not think of the other person solely as an opponent negotiation is like a dance and the person with the most familiarity always tends to take the lead so see even in, in that house deal like I knew uh, because we we really liked this house and we'd done work on it. We we'd uh, had a professional decorator in and and we had it um, uh, not staged, but we had we had it professionally decorated, so it looked really 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 sharp. And uh, and that was one of the things that he liked about it is there was no work to be done. He was a busy uh, busy guy and he didn't want to have to be doing any work. He wanted to move into a house that was a hundred percent rent. Uh, rent ready, 100% owner ready, and he didn't have to do any work. So, uh, it, you know, I was more familiar with with his situation than mine, maybe because I knew him a bit uh, with my daughter, uh, because I knew him through my daughter, but uh, that always helps too. So get to know a person, uh, Google them, uh, you know, go check them out on LinkedIn. What are they doing? Maybe they're buying 14 buildings next week. Uh, and maybe that's why they need their money. Like know as much as you can before you, before you go into the deal. Uh, because there's a good chance he doesn't have a clue who you are. So that, that's a, that's really, uh, that's another way to think of it. Uh, and remember the whole point of negotiating is really about compromise. If you get everything and the other guy gets nothing, not a good situation. Sometimes the other guy will end up with nothing, but you're still rescuing him. Like one, one of the things I think of is when we're doing agreements for sale on houses. So say you're helping someone who um, uh, maybe bought a $300,000 house with 5% down, the market's dropped 5%, so they really have no equity in their home and they need to move. Uh, they lost their job or, they, or they're or they moving to another city for a job or whatever. Well, an agreement for sale is, you know, maybe at that point there's no money changes hands. He gets nothing, but 
he doesn't lose money either because he doesn't have to pay a realtor and take a loss and, and this and that and there the and or he doesn't go into foreclosure different stuff like that so uh, again that's a win-win it does it's not always about the money that changes hand sometimes it's just rescuing them so that they don't have to worry about that big debt uh, albatross hanging on their back uh, and there should never be a person who's on the losing end. You know, if, if you go in with, I'm going to win and you're not getting anything, uh, well, uh, first of all, I don't think you'll feel very good about that. And keep in mind that it's not always what you think. They may not need that $10,000 that you're thinking ahead of time that they need to get out of this. They might just be very, very happy if you take over the mortgage. Um, so this means that you need to look out for yourself but also be willing to budge in order to satisfy both parties. I've heard of people and seen people argue over, um, actually my mentor Shelly, this is a really interesting one. When we did the event uh, here in Regina last week, she was telling me, like I said, we, we usually don't argue over, you know, two, three, four, five thousand dollars. Like we can get that back in a couple months worth of cash flow. It's just not that big of a deal. But she said, I remember that one time we were arguing over taking over a security contract which was like 189 bucks and she said after a month of going back and forth we realized how stupid that was and we could we just you know could have we wasted more than $189 worth of time negotiating on something that was just silly so value your time when it comes to stuff like that too um and uh of course the number one way to be strong in negotiations is be, always be working on other stuff too so that you're not only working on one particular deal uh, that's an, that's another way to stay on top of things also another way we find to, to get away with not putting really large deposits down on our on our properties as we tell them you know what we're buying all the time if I put a hundred thousand dollars down as a deposit on your property that means there's a good chance I can't be making offers on other properties so no my deposit's 10000 and you either take it or leave it. Let them know that you close. Let them know that if this deal is uh, what's been represented or presented so far uh, and you're happy with it, that, that you're going to close and they don't have to worry about that. Now, what they have to worry about is if they haven't told you the truth. You know, so if they're telling you utilities are $1,000 a month and then you get the actual bills and they're 2000 a month, well, there's another negotiating thing. Well, no, that brings my NOI down. That means the value of the building is dot, 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 dot. So that, that's why you always, again, want to get the actuals because nine times out of 10, the numbers they give you up front are missing stuff. So you have to be responsible to get everything so that you can make um, informed decisions. Uh, let me just see if I have any more questions on here. Uh, oh, we got some more people joining us. We got, hey, Susanna, good morning. How are you? Hi, Lindy, how are you? Happy Friday. Uh, hi, Lee. Hi, Earl and Donna. I'm not sure which one it is or both. Nice to have you on. Um, what else? Oh, Amanda says, a great article by Edna to read after today's Facebook Live and a video about negotiating vendor take backs. Oh, she's got a link on here too. So that's awesome. Perfect. Um, we've got Derek. Good morning, Derek. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Marie. How are you? Good morning, Lindsay. And good morning, Bailey. So what time do we have here? Uh, 10.34. So, geez, almost exactly half an hour again. So does anyone have any questions before I sign off? I do have another appointment here at 11, so I uh, don't want to stay on too long. But should one be asking anything outside of the standard profit and loss? Yes, you always want to get the rent roll as well. And the reason you want the rent roll is, uh, and, and you don't need to know the tenant's name, so sometimes they'll black that out. That's not a big deal. But yes, you should get uh, the rent roll as well because you want to see uh, on the rent roll, it usually tells you if they have any money outstanding on their rent. Uh, so you want to know what the quality of tenants are. Uh, and they'll also, you'll also be able to tell if they're fully paid on security deposits. You'll be able to tell when their lease started and when it ends. And all that kind of stuff is really, really important. And besides getting the actual financials, you will want to ask for backup. So you want to see their utility bills. You want to see, and that's something that they can actually phone down to say, 
uh, South Power, Manitoba Power, Alberta Power, whatever it is, and say, uh, I need a history of these bills for the last two years because uh, I'm looking at selling the building. What can you give me? And there's a printout that they can do, and then they can send that over to you. Uh, energy, water, all that kind of stuff. And, and then uh, compare it to other buildings that would be similar in, in size and stuff. Uh, what else do we got here? Rob says, some rental roles are not set up well and are very difficult to understand. Some rent roles? Yes, I know. Uh, and and it, sometimes they're handwritten and whatever, but you have to go with what they've got. Um, and 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 if you if you're having a hard time understanding it, get them to explain it to you. And if there's things that need clarifying, uh, one of the things that you can ask for is a certified rent roll. That means when they sign the bottom, and I know we have to do it when we're going for financing. When we sign the bottom, it says, "I am telling the truth. This date, my name. This is the rent roll." Um, because people can fudge that as well. Uh, the other thing to do is walk through every single unit. Uh, we got caught there before. Oh, we don't want to bother our tenants. We don't want to disturb our tenants. And then they show us, of course, the, the you know the five best units in the building, and we think, oh, you know, that's a pretty fair shake. But it's not. Look and walk through every single unit. Look for things that could go wrong. Uh, and uh, if if you've got the funds to do it, pay for an inspector because they'll be able to tell tell you a lot of that stuff in there as well. You're welcome, Rob. Any any other questions today? Okay, well, uh, I am going to sign off because, like I said, I do have another appointment. Very busy day today. So uh, I will see you all next Friday, Free Coaching Friday. And also for Mindset Monday, I am, even though we're on the road, I'm taking the camera, I'm taking my phone. You might hear a uh, uh, Mindset Monday or a Facebook uh, or a Free Coaching Friday from the vehicle or, or wherever. But uh, I'll keep you posted and, and maybe if it's a fun site, that'll be good too. So uh, you guys all have a, a good week. Next week is Family Week in our area. Uh, that means the kids are all off school. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a lot of fun with the kids and, and take a road trip and, and just have some fun. So I hope, hope you guys all do too. And we'll, we'll see you uh, Monday. Bye for now.